So today we're going to start talking about interpersonal communication. And I want to start with a little activity, if you guys are cool with that. Let's start with, uh, just hold up your hands, on a scale from one to five, how comfortable are you talking to someone that you've never met before? We got two, we got four, we got two, three, five, let a boy. Three, three, okay. So relatively comfortable. How are you guys doing? Doing well. How are you? We just tripled our crew. <laughs> so scale one to five, guys, quick. Just hold up your hand. How comfortable are you talking to someone that you've never met before? All right, tip top. So from what, zero to ten? Uh, zero, one to five. Oh, five, like a four. Four, yeah, okay. Four. Four? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. So uh, I'm trying to think now. We got the booze, too. Do two? Okay, that's hard to believe. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you think that that would be a challenge to you in starting a business? I'm going to put you on the spot here. I mean, I, I, I do it well enough. I just, it's not a fun thing for me, but I force myself to do it often. All right, that's okay. great. That's yeah. great. Because networking, you guys know what networking is? Networking is a huge deal in business. The name of the game is not who you know, it's who knows you. So I'll give an example. A friend of mine, she went to, uh, they had a speed networking thing. I don't know if you know what speed networking is. It's like dating, but instead of dating, you're actually just trading business cards and businessy type stuff. If you end up with a date, great, but that's not the idea. <laughs> um, so they do a speed networking thing, and she comes back. She's an office mate of mine. She's like, everybody in Madison knows you because I get out and talk to people because you want them to know you. I am terrible at remembering names, but people remember my name, and because of that, I can get business. So that's cool. It's not intentional that I forget their names. It just happens to be that that's not top of mind for me. I had a printer repair company before, and I could name your printer, how it was jamming, where it was located, how bad the dust was, but your name? Oh, oh, oh. that's tough. So, is anybody else in that boat? You remember other stuff about people, but their names kind of escapes you? Yeah. All right. So, I'm going to give you some advice that I need to take to just figure out how to remember people's names. I don't have good advice for how. I've heard tons of different stories as far as memory and stuff like that, but that's a tough nut to crack. So if any of you solve it, just shoot me and let me know. I got it. I cracked the egg. So um, who is a five? All right, tell me, why are you a five? I just feel comfortable talking to people. OK, that's cool. So you go into a bar alone. It's Friday night. Everybody else is with their friends, doing whatever. You have no problem. Probably not, no. I can just go and talk to them. I... All right, cool. Yeah. Do you have any secrets you want to share? Because <clears throat> two here, you need uh, some help. Yeah, there's some, like, as far as, like, if in a bar situation, I'd probably approach someone who is singled out and not in a group because it's harder to talk to a group. Okay. And make an impression, but if somebody's, like, alone or something, mm -hmm. it's so much more easier to do. Perfect. And as far as uh, talking to them, I just ask questions. Okay. Because people like talking th about themselves more than listening to you talk about yourself. Perfect. So. That's great. That's the 70-30 rule right there. Mm, I don't know anything else. I'm going to help you with that. You're, this is awesome. So 70-30 is that you talk 30% of the time, unless you're giving a speech, and then they talk 70% of the time. Because how often do you love to hear about how everybody else's day went? Oh, I got a wife, sometimes she just goes on. I don't even remember asking you how your day went. I don't know the <laughs> question. And she's still going, right? My mom, I could set the phone down, come back an hour later, she's still going. So kudos to them, they're good, they're great, they can talk. But 70-30 is a great rule to go by. Come on in. This is the place. How you guys doing? Better. That's great. that you guys are here. Woo! So 70-30, does that rule make sense? So if ever, not giving a speech, you're talking with someone, you realize that you're talking too much, the way out of that is to ask a question. So I say, hey man, how you doing? Good, how are you? That's a cool shirt, where'd you get that? And I would talk about it with uh, my girlfriend. Yeah, okay, CA, is that Canadian yeah. Army? Of America. All right, fantastic. All right, so why am I asking him questions? I'm looking for similarities. Something that you and I have in common. Because if you and I have something in common, we can have a conversation. And if we have a conversation, then all of a sudden you like it. And you're like, I remember that crazy James guy. He was into my yellow shirt. <laughs> Whatever, right? And I want to buy what he has. Or back and forth. I remember the guy with the yellow shirt. I want to buy what he has. Make sense? 
So what if I ask you a question, I'm like, see, I don't know what the hell that is. And then I just give up. You're like, who's this asshole, right? Just <laughs> wearing <laughs> a shirt? And you don't care? Right? So has anybody ever done that? Kind of found themselves in an awkward position? Boo, now what do I do? Run away. <laughs> that's, that's one option. I wouldn't recommend it. But this is in a personal communication that we're talking about, so maybe that's why. So what you want to do is ask questions. You want to find similarities. That's a lot of reasons, I think, why people watch sports and stuff like that. Some people like the sports. Other people just watch it so that they have something to talk about when they come to work or school or whatever. Hey, did you see that game? Well, I'm not into sports. When people ask me that, I'm like, oh, there's a game. So, but my wife's a teacher, right? So her teacher people get together and they drink around holidays, spring break, and stuff like that. So the teacher people get together and the spouses get together. And the spouses, I'll end up with a group of spouses, and they drink more because I have to tolerate the stories from the teachers. So they'll be talking about, let's say, a football game or something like that. And they'll say, hey, man, did you see that pass? Crazy, crazy. And I'll be like, oh, the defense, right? <laughs> and I'll ride that out for 15, 20 minutes because you can just make stuff up like that because it's so <laughs> easy, right? <laughs> and these people are loving me. I'm getting along right up until my wife comes in. You don't watch football. But in the end, I was having fun, these guys were getting along. You could argue that I had them snowed, but who cares, we're having a good time doing shots, right? No harm, happy times. Now what if I said, I don't watch football, when you ask me about the big game? And we're done. We're okay. done, game over. I have to try to find something else that we have in common. Whatever that is, right? You, you like little, My Little Pony? Uh, I love yellow shirts, man, I love yellow shirts. You know, you're trying to recover. You don't want to do the recovery thing. You can fake it and then change the subject. Does that make sense? All right, and the way that you do that is questions. Power of questions. So who is number five over here? Oh, yeah. You're number five. All right. What's the, tell me how you get there. Um, I don't know. I just, I just said five because I just like talking. I get spot like it's enjoying. Okay. Um, uh, and I just like to talk to people because then like, you get to learn more things. Perfect. It's kind of like you're bouncing things off of them and they're bouncing things off of you. And it's just like, it's just fun to like spark conversations. Out cool, of cool. You have a girlfriend? Yes. All right, how'd you meet her? Uh, at a pool. At a pool? Yes. Best place? Did you go up to her or did she go up to you? Um, uh, it's actually a really interesting story. So we... Uh, we got the time. Yeah, so <laughs> actually... Um, I had planned to go up to her and talk to her, but when I got out of the pool to like dry off, she had already come up to me. So it was really like weird because I was like so shocked that she had already like come up to me to talk. So, and she knows you, that, and it's really funny. Yeah, this is just falling into my lap here. So you guys communicated without talking. Basically, yeah. All right. How did you do that? Uh, eye contact. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna do a little game. You guys cool for a game? Sure. Um, are you guys cool pairing up? Yeah. This is gonna be some number twos that can have a challenge, right? <laughs> So I want you guys to pair up and just stand face to face with your person, your partner, somewhere around the room. Cool? Raise your hand, yeah. Raise your hand if you need help finding a partner. You want to All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to make one contact with you. It's all right. 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 I want you to time it for two minutes. You guys are going to have a conversation, but, but you don't get to use words. So there's no words, there's no tone, it's strictly eye contact and body language. Two minutes. Totally. So what are you supposed Anything. Two minutes. Ready? Go. <laughs> Time. Time. All right. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you, guys. Can you head back to your seats? Cool. I don't know if you can find it. All right. I thought we were talking about the weather. So I was like, oh, yeah. I heard some laughing. And it was great to watch your body language. You could tell some people. How many people were awkward there? It got a little weird. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many people had no problem with that? Ain't no thing, right? Ain't no thing. So, the idea is to point something out. We heard some laughing here, right? How many people were laughing? That's most of the room. You guys, nobody's telling you jokes. 
right? Are you just laughing at the way they were standing? What was funny? What was funny? Uh, just awkward. You know, you just awkward? All right. All right. So how much communication was happening there with no words? And if we think about that, how much communication happens even when we're using words? The point is, is that the majority of our communication is outside of our words. For example, if I say, I love you, which do you believe? Do you believe this, or do you believe the words? This. Totally. Totally. Body language is way more powerful than words. Does everybody agree with that? You can tell me if you disagree. All right. So, I want you guys, how many of you are aware of body language, just that it exists? Most of you, all right. And how many people actually consciously observe people as far as their body language? All right, cool, cool. All right, so I just want you guys to freeze right now, freeze where you're at in place, and just look around you. Let's look at some people's body language here. Here's this guy, right? He owns the place. <laughs> Here's this guy, owns the place. He's also up front, right? Here's this guy, he's comfortable, but he's not sure, right? How about cross-armed guy? Interesting, huh? So how about leaning forward? That's perfect. He's interested. That's great. How about the guy in the back with the stocking cap? You're not so sure. I might be flatlining here. That's okay. But it's interesting. All we have to do is body language says so much. And does anybody here want to volunteer what they're thinking? Flannel guy, you got something? No, I was just... I guess not really. All right. So the beauty of body language is that a lot of times, most of the time, it's subconscious, right? You have to put your body somewhere. You can't just curl up in a ball. And even if then, you'd be giving something away. So your body is giving away what you intend beyond what your words are saying. So your words you consciously use, but your body language, for the most part, is subconscious. I can consciously decide to do something with my body, but outside of that, if I'm thinking about words, it's tough to think about body as well. Does that make sense? All right. So I want you guys to do, we're going to do another exercise. Um, we've got to figure out how to pair our chairs. I want you guys to get in another, a different group of pairs. I'm going to have you guys in a chair, and you're going to face each other in the chair. And the one person, one person's going to be number one, one person's going to be number two. And number one gets to change their body position. Number two has to guess what they're thinking. Cool? All right, so can we get into pairs of chairs facing each other? Yes. Might take a little bit of mobility here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to partner? Yeah, yeah, want partner. Right. Uh, here. Which one do you want to be? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, can, you can do the changing. Oh, I guess oh, you have preference one. Right. You guys are, you guys want to sit down? Okay. I'll go with number one. All right, so everybody have someone, or what do you got? I don't know. You have a chair here. All right, so we're going to do this for two minutes again. So, every who's number one? We got number one. We got number one. Number one, you guys got to figure out who's number one here. Cool, cool, number one here. All right, so number ones, you get to give the body position. Number two, you have to call out what you think that they're feeling. And so every five seconds, I want you to switch positions. And we'll do it for two minutes, and then we'll switch one and two. Make sense? All right, two minutes, standing fire away. All right, all right. All right. Yeah, just like presenting. You want to relax. Just get a little bit relaxed. Yeah, it's intense. Yeah, it's intense. This one's like really nice. It's nice. I'm running out of nice. Oh, yeah. Bye. Just not that many. Relax. I'm pretty relaxed. You're like waiting for women. That's probably why you know I'm about to leave just you're, 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 you
Pottery, maybe? That's like this. Pottering as well. You're like checking a woman out. What are you doing there? Minute 20 drinks. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so we do it. We don't have to gender you all the time. I was going to say, yeah. I was really thinking of that for a while. I don't know what that is. I didn't know what a girl sit like. Okay. Says something. Is it? Do you have to invite you? Sit on the handles. I just oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Or how would she sit if it was an option? Decent. Alright. Alright. Crossing. Perfect. I don't know. I think we would have. That's right. Exactly. So I'm going to be able to do it. Was it close pretty hard to make? All right. Checking out. Looking at your phone. Yeah, you just dancing through the phone. All right. All right. Yeah, it's perfect. Here's another. That's all you need. Body language. Come on. Yep. All right. Let's switch now. Are you guys comfortable with the body language stuff? Yeah. All right. We're gonna switch one and two. So number two, you get to do the body language. Number one gets to guess. We'll do it for two minutes here. You guys can go on. Just, uh, yeah, yeah, just own the flow type of. <laughs> you know, just not really <laughs> it's not interested, but maybe, maybe like. You're all right. Maybe like, think, I don't know. Think it's also, uh, like, um, time it's like the same as going Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. 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 Real, I can see why you're Real anxious, maybe a little, uh, sort of. Yeah. But also, like. Overpower. I don't know if we can go all the way. I like that. I really have a I know, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm not going to go to this thing Ooh, all the way you go with it. A little like protective, you know, you just like you're ready to get up. But like. Well, that one's thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I actually do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I do what I think is like. Uh, really intense. Uh, 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 but I can't actually do anything. Yeah, uh, it's like, yeah, this is my anxious A program that I'm not actually using. Oh, yeah. I put a bunch of people there. These are more. Alright. How was that? Was it good times? Yeah. All right, I wanna. Now you guys are paired up, right? Yeah. So, was there any one person that you felt dominated both times, or did you think that just dominated the conversation, or how which way you guys were steering, or did you think you guys were pretty even? Pretty even. Pretty even. Okay. So was anybody better at guessing than the other person? Doesn't matter. No harm. All right. Let's go back to your seats for you guys. So does anybody right now already have a business that they started? You can sit there. Even if it's just delivering newspapers, whatever. Uh, how many here are guaranteed that they're going to start a business sometime in their life? Alright, so about half. That's cool. Is anybody guaranteed not to start a business? This is not going to happen. It's not in the cards. I like two weeks paid vacation and a bi-weekly paycheck. No, that's cool. That's very cool. So congrats for that. Um, we're going to talk about controlling the conversation. So controlling the conversation, if two people are having a conversation, there's always going to be a dominant player. Always a dominant player. But oftentimes the person is dominant, they can switch, and you can control it. And sometimes you want to be the dominant player, 
and sometimes you do not. And the way that you control it is essentially by being a lawyer. You want to ask questions to something that you already know the answer to. So for example, if I'm doing most of the talking and I'm guiding you, that means I'm dominant. But if you counter my question, for example, how about you ask me a question? Um, Anything. Where'd you get the subject? I was just going to ask that. That's a great <laughs> question. Do you like it? Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Did you ever think that you'd be looking good in a suit jacket? That I would be? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Who's dominating now? You. He, but let's do it the other way. Ask me another question. Uh, where are you from? I'm from, uh, well, I just... I'm from uh, Eau Claire mainly, but I came to Madison in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> now we got a rough time, don't we? So you got to keep asking. Uh, keep the I, conversation I going. Claire. I'm sorry? Why did you move to Madison? Uh, because not Eau Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Good reason. Why, why not Eau Claire? Uh, Eau Claire? I grew up there like as a kid, uh, high school, and I went to college there. Madison, I heard, was a party town. Turns out it is. It's a good place to start a business. You know. <laughs> I see where you're too. This is, this is awesome. Who's the five? Let's try this with the five. There's no harm in that. There's no harm in that. Who's the five here? There's a five somewhere around here? Alright, let's do the same thing. Ask me a question. Uh, Anything. When did you marry? I got married a way long time ago. Holy cow, let me think about that. 2002. 2002? Mm -hmm. uh, where was she from? Alright, I want you to pause right there. You see what he said right after I said 2002? It's 2002, he verified. That means that he was listening. And I'm like, oh, yeah, he's listening. All right, keep going. Where was she from? She is from St. Cloud, Minnesota, but she was going to school at Eau Claire at the same time. What was she studying at? Uh, where you were studying, too? Uh, I was studying graphic design. She became a teacher, so she was studying education. Okay. Um, when she was at... Uh, uh, St. Cloud, that's where she came from. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been there? Did you ever visit her parents or anything? Uh, we do, now that we got married. I visit there way too often. Do you like it? Do you like that place? St. Cloud? Yeah. yeah uh, it's like literally any town USA. Any there's, town? Any yeah. any there's the Applebee's, there's the Sears, the Target. You can Typical just, stores, yeah. It's, yeah. it's literally any town USA. Do you not like that though? Yeah, I'm not like a fan. I don't know. I'm you, not like, a fan. you like the vibrance of like Madison? I like, like I just visited Austin. Okay. And Austin, you got your Anytown USA stuff, but you also got your cool bars and restaurants and stuff like that that are just some dude's bar. Okay, so you like to go to bars? What's like, do you like the drink? Like, do you like some certain beers? Perfect. You see what he's doing there? That's control, baby. That's beautiful. So that's the difference between a two and a five. <laughs> 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 so now, there's nothing wrong with being a two, okay? The question is, are you comfortable being a two? Do you want to be a five? Or counter to that, are you, do you think a five is too much? Do you want to be down there too? Let's ask number five. Are you, do you think you're cool, comfortable? Yeah. Is there any reason you'd want to go down? No, probably not. Right? How about you? Is there any reason you'd want to go further lower than a two? No. Okay. Is, there, <laughs> is there any reason you want to go higher than a, than a two? Yeah, I mean, it'd be, I think it'd be better just for relations with other people if I was better at just making conversations. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So did you pay attention to what he did? Yeah. All right. Rule number one is ask questions. Rule number two is answer their question with a question to verify that you're listening, right? So 2002. And then keep the conversation going. And you can keep the conversation going by asking questions. So simple, right? And who is talking most of the time? You. Me. But who is controlling the conversation? Boom. That's a beautiful lawyer. Beautiful, because you know, the lawyer doesn't want to be talking. Let me tell you what the witness says. Right? you got to ask the question that you know how the witness is going to answer. And in the end, it doesn't matter what the witness says. You can control the conversation with the questions. So now, does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Are you ready to try it again? I'm ready. All right. I want you, who's, there's another number five here? Yeah. All right, I want you two to have a conversation. You gotta start, you gotta ask him a question. No, it was, it was me, yeah. So, <laughs> what's your name? I'm okay. What's yours? Oh, Christian, never mind. <laughs> so, He's the boss. He's the boss, yeah. You <laughs> said okay? Like, yeah. Where are you from? I'm from India. Okay. What about you? I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, actually. That's cool. So, what made you start the hub? Uh, I didn't start it, actually. You okay, did. time no out. Way. Who took control there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like two questions. Boom. <laughs> well, right. I was going to explain There's that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong, okay? Sure. It's safe place here. Yeah. So, when he 
said where he was from. What did you reply? You said, okay. I did. Yep. Oh, man. Yep. So that's, that's not bad. That's not wrong. A lot of people do it. But if you would have repeated what he said, let's try that. So ask him the same question. Where are you from? I'm from India. India. Okay. Uh, what Game changer right there. Yeah. One word. All you had to do was repeat what he said. Is there, is, does everybody get that? Yeah. Now who controls it? All right, so you got control. Keep it going. So uh, why did you come to the United States? I just wanted to get this American college experience that's not available anywhere else. So what are you studying here then? So I'm, a, I'm in the computer science club, so computer science. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little jab. Yeah. Just trying to take control kind of your hand, But you still got control. Yeah. So maintain, keep control. So why computer science? Um, I just want to be at the edge of technology, and this is what's happening at computer science is the future. So. I'm doing computer science. Uh, so are you interested in uh, like working computer science or doing research? I'm going to pause you right there. Yeah. you got to repeat what he yeah, said. Repeat. Mm -hmm. All right. So well, he like said edge of technology, annoying. right? Yeah. So I want you to ask the question based on his answer. So for example, it would be like, edge of technology, help me with that. I mean, edge of technology, that's pretty vague, right? Okay. Like, I'm looking for the most advanced blender. <laughs> <laughs> right? Or is it like, I want to... Go with the speed of light. Like, edge of technology is pretty broad. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I would challenge that, because that keeps conversation going, and it proves that you're listening. Right. All right, so ask him about the edge of technology. So, like, what do you mean by the edge of technology? So by the edge of technology, I mean that uh, if you want to start a business in something, you probably want to do that something new that doesn't exist before. So that's what I mean by the edge of technology. You're reaching the point where this something doesn't exist, but then you're doing something new and that now exists and hence you can take advantage of that and capitalize over that and helps you create so, value. Alright, so what he said, there's a lot there, right? Yeah. So, now we're going to introduce perspectives here, right? I'm going to sidestep here for a little bit. Everybody has their own map of the world, right? And that map is not reality. There's the realistic world and then there's everybody's perception of it. And that's everybody's individual perception of the world, right? For example, I just gave this um, example to Danny. If I tell you I just had an accident, what do you think? What kind of you don't know, right? Yeah. How about you? If I say I just had an accident, bad. It could be that bad. <laughs> right? All right. When you say bad, what do you mean? Bad? Like, did you get injured at all, or was it like what kind of accident was it? I wet my pants. What? Whoa. <laughs> That's so okay. you see what I mean? The word accident, yeah. I have a view of accident, and you clearly had a view of accident where you thought it was a car accident, yeah. right? Or I fell down an elevator shaft or something like that. Somewhere I got injured, and I just had wet pants. Same word, two totally different perspectives. Which one is right? They're all right, in your view. So your job, with what he said, what he answered, is to define that so that you and him are on the same game plane, right? Because you assume that you know what he's talking about, and he assumes that you know what he's talking about. But are you sure that you guys know what you're talking about? It's called mutual mystification. So you both think that you know what's being defined, and you're both not on the same page, right? I'm wet my pants, he's thinking I got in a car accident. Two totally different things, right? So what he answered, he had a lot to that answer, I don't know if you remember any part of it. No, he said he was interested in starting a business about something that hadn't been explored before. Perfect. Perfect. So I want you to keep down, keep control, and I want you to keep that conversation going. Uh, so have you started any businesses in the past? Uh, no, I have not. But I started my own nonprofit organization, but I can't, I guess. So. Well, what, what, did the, what was the nonprofit for? It was. Uh, I'm going to time out though. Yeah. Now was a great chance to compliment him. Does anybody like getting compliments? I hope all of you. <laughs> Jesus, it's a rough crowd here. Does anybody like getting insulted? We can change this class, have fun with that one. <laughs> okay, so you can compliment him, right? Because yeah. he said, I didn't start a business, I started a nonprofit. Right. In my world, that's a huge deal to start a nonprofit. I would consider that on the same, if not harder, to start a nonprofit than a business. So you could compliment him on that, if you feel that way. I don't know if you feel that way or not. No. Anything nonprofits are just savages, right? <laughs> ah! Screw your nonprofits, get out of here. But you can compliment him. Say, no, it's cool. Nonprofits, that had to be harder, right? So you can compliment him on that. And how does he perceive you if you just complimented him? What a jerk. 
Is that what he's thinking? No. What is he thinking? This guy's all right. He's listening to me, and he thinks I'm awesome. Keep this conversation going. Fair? Yeah. All right. So I want you to compliment him on that. If you feel that way. If you don't, tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, I didn't, like, ask a question. <laughs> so you okay? Tell me what you said again it's about the small business. Like you didn't start a business, but you started a nonprofit. So I didn't start a business, but I started a nonprofit organization. Okay, okay, keep going. About the nonprofit. Yeah. Oh, so the nonprofit was just a platform for progressive politics. Okay. So that All right. I started in my hometown, and it was called Ahmedabad Student Parliament, and it was just like a parliament for students, and they could voice their opinions on that, and through that we got like. We talked to the Prime Minister of India and uh, we got like permission from him, from him to send the proceedings from the, uh, it's basically a single day event that happens uh, or, or periodically and the proceedings to that event be allowed for, would proceed to the Legislative Assembly and that's what it is I guess. Also, it was easier to do a non-profit than a business, to be honest, because we don't have to worry about making money, or it's easier, <laughs> That's just, the name, right? it's easier to get grants and stuff like that. There's a lot of non-profit businesses that are doing great, making lots of cash. They're yeah. still non-profits, right? Yeah. CEO of Red Cross, he's doing okay. Fair. Probably. <laughs> CEO of United Way, doing okay. So, fair. So, you can ask him, you still have control. So, with all that he said, what could you say next to maintain control? Um, I can ask him, like, so... Why specifically uh, politics? Like, uh, it was just chance. My friends were into that. They, it was one of their school projects, so they just talked to me about that, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm interested in doing this. Pretty cool." So that's a great question. You could have asked them any question in the world, and you asked, you challenged them a little bit, which is great. You're maintaining dominance there, and you're controlling the conversation. So isn't that great? Because yeah. you said, "Hey, man, you could have cured cancer. You could have sold candy bars for schools. You could have chosen to help homeless puppies." But you chose this parliament thing. Why, right? That was a great question. And now he maintains control. Cool? Yeah, we're going to get you in a fight in no time. You got this down. All right. So is everybody comfortable with that? All right. Now let's talk about tone. Who thinks that they can control the tone of their voice in a phrase where they can make that phrase mean three different things? That makes sense? That's an awkward question. Let's take the yellow shirt guy. All right. I want you to tell black shirt guy that you love him. I love you. All right. How does that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, huh? We'll leave you two alone. All right. Now I want you to change your tone. Say the same thing. I love you. <laughs> that, was, that was the same tone. I want, to the same tone. Yeah. I want you to change the tone so that it's clear that you do not love him. That's pretty weak, right? I, was, I, was super weak. I don't think he loves you at all. Just like so we're staying in this room. <laughs> make sure you guys don't fight or anything. All right, now I want you to say it so it's a little confusing. We're not really sure. Uh, um, I, I love you. All right. I think you're not know. even sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now I want you to tell him that's a nice shirt. That's a nice shirt. Thanks. Seems sincere. Now I want you to say it kind of insulting. That's a nice shirt. That did not work out. Well. <laughs> yeah, that did, like, not, well, did not happen. I'm really bad at this. I'm also a dude, so I'm right there right there. <laughs> We gotta push boundaries, right? That's the thing about starting a business, right? Pushing boundaries. That's a bitch. Safe? Alright, do it again. <laughs> Without saying a word! We already did that exercise. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, that's a. No, that's not. I'm bad. I'm bad. How about you do it just mad? Like, he stole that shirt from your mom. <laughs> <laughs> your mom is at the bus stop battered right now mean? because he, he loves the shirt so much. So you gotta tell him, that's a nice shirt. Hey, that's a nice shirt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> stole from my mom. Do you believe that he really thinks that's a nice shirt? Not really. Alright. Now I want you to do it like you want that shirt. <laughs> Dude, that is literally the best shirt I've ever seen. You gotta use the same words though. That's a nice shirt. <laughs> Nicest? Same word. Nice. That is a We're nice trying to shirt. Prove a point here. Yeah, the point. The point. Terrible person. <laughs> That's alright, we're pushing boundaries here. It's alright. That is a nice shirt. Alright. Uh, I would have just touched it. Man, that is a nice shirt. <laughs> yeah. Alright, that's perfect. We're cool? 
So tone uh -huh. and body language, way more powerful than words. Is anybody going to challenge me on that? Somebody? <laughs> no? Okay. Tone and body language are not more powerful than words. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, Perfect. Um, I'm going to give you a million dollars. you believe me? No. Dude. There you go. Drop out. I'm going to give you a million dollars. Believe me. All right. Tone and body language different? Words the same? All right. Cool? I don't have a million dollars for you, sir. <laughs> Sorry, give me a couple of years. Um, so now you talked about touching though. Right? That's cool. Uh, visual, auditory, kinesthetic. You guys know what those are? You cool with that? Have you guys studied that stuff? I don't know what they teach you in college anymore. I went to college like decades ago. Um, so this is how people think subconsciously. So for example, this guy clearly <laughs> say kinesthetic. <laughs> so kinesthetic is touching, right? So you mentioned touching. So if I come over to you, I'm like, hey, yellow shirt guy, how's it going today? Fantastic. How does this hand make you feel? Uh, you really get, like, you've got the grip. You okay. Got the dominance of my hand here. Okay. Are you a little awkward? Yeah, it's almost a little too much. How about me just holding on to your hand continuously here? Is that a little that, awkward? That also makes it a little more awkward. All right, what if I do this? I don't like friends almost, but if okay. we're not friends yet, it's, it's a little awkward. Okay, what if I come here? <laughs> 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 not a kinesthetic dude, right? But well, there's going to be kinesthetic people that come up to you like that. All touchy. That's just natural. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I hate it. Like, this is my cabbage patch. Don't <laughs> go into my cabbage patch. I'll shake your hand right here. But this is here, right? Most people are visual. So they're looking at people. They're picking out stuff and all that kind of jazz. So they're talking. When they're talking, they're using words like see, saw, look at that. Where kinesthetic people are like, how does that make you feel? I don't know how it makes me feel. I just saw it, right? And there's auditory. I hear that. Sounds are a big deal to them. Now, it's tough to do sounds all the time unless people are actually picking up on your tone. Uh, auditory people are going to pick up on your tone way more than a visual person is. Or a visual person is going to pick up on body language, and a kinesthetic person is going to pick up on feeling. Make sense? So if he grabs your shirt and says, that's a nice shirt. That's a nice shirt. How does that make you feel? Really sure. Alright, what if he grabs your right shoulder and says it? That <laughs> <laughs> he's not quite sure uh, how to touch me in this situation. <laughs> Perfect. So does anybody here feel that they're more visual? Alright. How about any more kinesthetic people? You feel kinesthetic? Alright. Christian, will you do me a favor? Yeah. You give him a hug? Yeah. <laughs> Did you just say yes? No. I've been waiting for this yeah. moment! <laughs> alright, alright. Did you guys think that was a sincere hug? No. No, what? I know that. Either one. I was smiling the whole time. <laughs> I think, From your end, I think the, the hug this way was more sincere yeah. than that. <laughs> alright, alright. Is anybody else kinesthetic? You kinesthetic? Yeah. Alright, will you hug him? Yes. <laughs> okay. Hey man, what's up? <laughs> Alright, so I want to point out a couple things. Okay. This guy had to get comfortable, right? Yeah. He said, hey man, what's up? Yeah. This, we're cool with this, right? So you had to put a little disclaimer in there. Fair? Mm -hmm. And then who tapped who's back? Oh, uh, I did. You tapped, he did not tap. Totally kinesthetic. You're just like, ah. he, he also went all in. His head was like, past his shoulder a good bit. <laughs> yeah. He's <laughs> getting in the neck there. So, nothing wrong either way, that's just the way that you communicate, right? So, you just want to be aware of how you communicate, and more so, how the other people that you're communicating with communicate. Because you want to match them. Does that make sense? Alright, so now we're going to try another test, or another game, I should say. But this one's going to be even, this is going to be the hardest one of the night. Most time of the night. Not a lot of time. Alright, are you guys up for a hard test? Sure. Alright, I want you... Do you guys all know each other? Not really. I'm Not really. Not okay. I want you to partner with someone that you have never ever spoken to before. Is that cool? 
Just partner up. Okay. You probably spoken I'm, with everyone. I'm a pastor. No? Okay. Okay. Just pick someone you've never spoken with before. Three. Okay. Yeah. Thomas. All right. So the first thing that I want you guys to do. Three. You guys ready? Yeah. I want you to hug and I want you to hold it for five seconds. All right. I think they want to survive. As soon as it gets awkward, I want you to raise your hand. Oh, oh, I thought you were just five seconds. Yeah, I get up for five seconds. I, I love hugging people. All right, I'm all about Very nice. All right, now I want you to shake hands as you would normally, and see if you can pull away before the other person does. I don't mean like a game. I mean like a slide comfortable. Does that make sense? I want you to face each other. And it's got to be a comfortable distance for both of you, whatever that distance is. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not like yeah. 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 The distance of so, uh, a handshake yeah. 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 to the distance yeah. where I would talk to people. Yeah. 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 All right, so I want you to stop. Uh, you <laughs> just look around. We got closer. We got farther away. <laughs> Fair? All right, now, without talking, without moving, you're going to stare into the other person's eyes for 30 seconds. Some of you guys hate this, right? <laughs> yeah. 30 seconds. All right. I want you guys to pause. So after 30 seconds, it's not a ton of time, but I thought that was just torture you if I went longer. <laughs> you guys start to match breathing subconsciously. You guys might even be best friends now after staring at each other. Because there's a lot going on subconsciously from just staring in someone's eyes, right? I would feel something. I love her Right? So well, you can have a conversation, I can look in you and I, and it's no problem, right? What if I look over here? Well, I'm like, hey, Christian, did you see out the window there? Or, hey, Christian, how's it going? Oh, weird. Totally weird, right? So you look Should someone in the eye, do you trust me? Yeah. Totally. Do you trust me now? No. No. Now, what is about breathing patterns? I can match your breathing pattern, and I can guarantee that you'll like it. I can also change my pace so that you're like, holy cow, what's wrong with this guy? He's going way too fast. Or maybe I'm going a little too slow. Does that make sense? That's so what I'm asking you guys. Go ahead. Um, so, does it ever, like, if you stare at them too long, though, would it sometimes make them uncomfortable? Like, at what point, like, how do you make sure that you're not making them uncomfortable because you're just, like, staring right at them? Great question. And the answer, of course, is what's natural and what feels natural. Okay? So I could say, what's your name? Ben? ben? Okay, Ben, if I stared in your eyes this whole time, it's going to feel kind of weird, right? Yeah. But am I staring, or am I changing my facial expressions? Changing your facial expressions. All right, and when I change my facial expressions, are you looking at me in the eye, or are you wondering, what the hell is this guy thinking? I'm thinking about what you're thinking. All right, so when you're thinking about what I'm thinking, are you really concerned about where my eyes are? No. No. So do you know if I was looking at you this whole time? No. That's how. So there's so much, we, like, through this class, we taught you a ton, a ton of information. Fair to say? We got verbal, auditory, kinesthetic. We got questions. We got dominating the conversation. Tons of stuff, right? Matching breathing and all this kind of stuff. Is it possible for you to concentrate on all of that stuff on a conscious level in a conversation? No. Hells no. No, 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 no. So that's why you keep track of it in your head. You study it. You watch people. And it becomes subconscious. You don't even have to worry about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want, also want to point something out. When Ben asks that question, does he seem fast or slow? Ask your question again. The same question? Any question. Um, I'll just ask the same one. Like, why, why would you, or would you ever make anybody uncomfortable by staring at them too long? Okay. Fast, fast. or slow? Fast. A little fast? All right. See, to me, I thought it was slow. Agreed. I thought it was slow, too. Especially when you, the first time you asked it. He's so this is great! Look at all the different perspectives. Who's right? Nobody. Me. <laughs> In the end, you're all right. But then when you change pace, you have to speed up your pace or slow it down to match Ben. So then would it be about like trying to match that person? Like while you're talking with them, you understand how fast they're talking and thinking, so then you try to match what they're doing too. Totally. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And there comes a point when you can't exactly match them because then they're like, this guy's creepy. Right? You still have to be your own person. Yeah. But a person's going to like people that are most like them. Okay. okay? Opposites attract is totally wrong. <laughs> totally wrong. When it comes to body language and stuff like that. Does that make sense? 
All right. Does anybody have any questions so far? We got a little bit of time here, but does anybody run into something uh, that they had a rough time with? Uh, we talked about body language, but we didn't talk about how we could use that to our advantage. Great question. I skipped over that. I'm sorry. So body language, you need to use body language essentially as another language so that you can read what the person is doing and what they're thinking outside of their words. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah. Then we respond to that. Is that what we do? You can either, well, you do it one of a couple ways. Sometimes if you're bold, you can challenge them on it. You know, you told me that you want to stick around for another hour, but I'm under the impression you want to leave because you pointed that way. Okay. Right? Well, you seem like you're interested, but your arms are crossed, and look, your foot is pointed towards the door. So, or, I don't have to be so bold. And be like, what's your name? Chris. Chris, how can I make this class better for you? What were you hoping to leave this class with? I actually don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay. Okay, where does foot go? Oh, now he's interested. Beautiful. So you can use it to your advantage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now i got to work on him, try to get him to uncross his arms, right? <laughs> So now you're conscious of it, you're like, nope, yeah. they're not going, right? It's all about you, right? you got crossed arms. Yeah. But your feet are interested here. Yeah. What were you hoping to get out of this class? Well, the email, the email basically told us who you were and like a little bit of background. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just hoping to basically learn something new. Okay. And uh, actually, I do understand that body language and... Uh, the things that you do around other people subconsciously mm -hmm. uh, affects how your uh, conversation is going with them. Sure. So, yes, I, uh, that's what I was hoping to learn more about okay. and get more. I like how you're trying to get me to be uncomfortable, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not going to do that, yes. <laughs> no, but... Uh, uh, can we give him a hug? <laughs> him? Or him? Him. I can give him a hug. I don't care. Alright, I'm going to cross. <laughs> that, that is cheating. Yeah. That's cheating. That's cheating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. But uh, I did learn a lot about uh, body language and how you can use it to your uh, own advantage. Okay. And based on what situations you want. You can okay. Use it or not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last thing I have for you is called the four second rule. The four second rule is going to turn you from a two into a five. The four second rule is, is, have you ever gone into a, a place, bar, restaurant, networking event, strip club, whatever it is, that you want to have a conversation with someone but you're shy, you feel awkward? Yeah. How many people have been in that place? Alright, so the four second rule is you have four seconds to make your move. Okay? So I'm going into whatever, let's just say I'm going into a bar, and I know this guy with all the flags on his shirt, what's your name? Andrew. Andrew has got $10 million that he wants to invest in my company. But Andrew's hanging out with the yellow shirt guy, right? And I'm like, the yellow shirt guy and the guy are just hanging out, right? I can't interrupt that conversation. But then you got four seconds, right? Four seconds, do it. Andrew, what's going on? Not a lot. How about you? I'm James. Fantastic shirt you got there. Thank you. You have $10 million to give me, I heard. That might, might be the That case. might be a little bold. <laughs> a little bold. Too much. But the rule is four seconds, because if you give yourself more than four seconds, yeah, what are the chances I'm going to talk to Andrew? Pretty slim. And what are the chances I'm going to get Andrew's $10 million if I don't talk to him? Worse. Yeah. Four seconds. So, is there anybody here that you want to meet that you don't know? Uh, that guy. That guy. Sorry, that guy. All right. <laughs> so, we have four seconds. Go meet him. Hey, how's it going? I'm Rish. Rish? Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, Rish. you. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> so, uh, how many of you guys have girlfriends? How many want girlfriends? That's oh. hard. Okay, so the four second rule actually comes from Mystery, who is a pickup artist for girls. So some of his uh, some of his ways were a little questionable ethical, ethically, <laughs> right? But the four second rule is a great rule that can go with business as well. So you want to meet someone networking. Let's say you know someone, but you have, want to have a conversation with them. You want to raise from someone. You want to raise from your boss, right? You have four seconds. You decide, man, i got to go ask my boss for a raise. Otherwise, if you think about it too much, what happens? I don't get a raise. You're going to crash. I don't get a raise. What are you, you going to say in your head? He's not going to give me a raise. 
What? I don't deserve a raise. The company's having a rough time. I saw their stock price. <laughs> right? Yeah. Four seconds, over four seconds, your head's going to get in the way. And who's going to get in the way? Is your boss saying, I'm not going to give you the raise because you didn't come to me? No. It's all up here. Right? So four seconds bypasses that. It says, screw you, subconscious. I got this. I'm getting my telling me $10 million. I'm meeting this dude and I'm getting my raise. Happy times, right? Poo poo. Do you have any more questions? I'm not saying that I know everything, so I'm keeping communication related. Fire. I think a lot of the bigger problems I've had in networking is generating an interest in the other person. So okay. why the person really is not interested in talking? So Perfect! You're talking to someone that's just boring, right? Yeah. Okay. Like in the beginning, the way you were talking, and you're with Christian, and you're being completely un uninterested, and like you're stopping with open-ended answers. Yep. So what yep. do you do then? So when he's uh, when he says okay or something like that. When you are like, like giving short answers to his questions. Yep. And then you are just getting awkward. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so then you you have to dump, you have to control the conversation. Okay. And is it safe to say? Um, let me ask this: Is there anybody here in this room? who considers themselves to be not interested. Maybe this guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can't put it on your phone. I have to pull you out. <laughs> so anybody here that considers themselves not interesting? Okay, so is it safe to say that if everybody thinks that they're interesting in some way, that you could find in what way to think they're interesting? I am asking you. Are you sure everybody has a cool hobby or interest? Or sure. Like that, that How could you find that out? Asking them about it. Perfect. And what kind of question could you use? So, what kind of job do you have? Where do you, what do you study? Perfect. Like Maybe. And then Perfect. How do you find their interest from that? You can be the most interesting man in the world, right? Well, I don't always ask questions, but when I do, I find out you're more interesting than me. Oh. Right? That interesting guy? Billboard guy? Yeah. It was a lost <laughs> pop culture of <reference>. it. <laughs> Make sense? All right, so I can ask you questions, figure out something interesting about you, right? Did Christian know that you had this nonprofit that you started? No, you don't. Does anybody think that's kind of interesting? No. Does anybody think that's just the most boring thing you've ever heard in your entire life? You can be a safe place here, so if you want to answer that, that's cool. <laughs> so you're an interesting dude, right? Nobody knew that before. And what did it take? Simple question, right? A couple questions. And we found out you're an interesting dude. So you could find that out about anybody here. But I was asking about the other way around. Like, what if I'm talking to you, and you you don't you don't take interest in me? Like, what I'm asking you. All right. So how do you generate? So then interest you still have to dominate the conversation. Can you give me an example? So you, you try talking to me. Okay. And ask me a question. How's it going? You got a nice shirt. Where'd you get the shirt? Some shop. Some shop? Like, was it on the moon? I just like West Town Mall. West Town Mall. You know, I've never been to West Town Mall. How many times do you go to West Town Mall? Once a week. Once a month. You go to the mall once a week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. You've got to tell me, why do you go to the mall once a week? I do not go once a week. I just, a, I just said that. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not, I mean, I'm not judging you or anything. I'm just curious. What do you do at the mall? Just walk around, you know, enjoy the free air conditioning. <laughs> you know, it's December now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So, what if... That's a good question, right? So, I have to make a judgment call. Do I want to carry on this conversation with this dude? If he's got $10 million to give my company, i got to find a way, right? And you are clearly not interested. Yeah. I have to find a way. So, what if I said... It sounds to me like you're not interested in carrying this conversation on. If you said that to me, mm -hmm. it'd be like, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of busy right now, so. All right, busy standing or just learning how to exhale? Just talking to this guy. Sorry, I mean. All right, I'll tell you what. Would it make sense if I just bought you a beer? Maybe, yeah. All right. How did your body language change when that happened? Just you perked up, man. Yeah. You must like your beer. There's nothing wrong with that. So you're just like, hey, hey. And this, this is yeah. going to cost me five bucks, but now I got your interest and maybe your $10 million. Interesting. Cool? Yeah. All right. So what if I kind of, this is another mystery thing. He would do these little insults, right? I'd be like, you decided to wear a blue shirt on like the worst blue shirt day possible. Why did you choose that? It's Tuesdays. Tuesdays are bad blue shirt days. Oh, you don't know that? 
See, in America, we don't wear blue shirts. Like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... So now you're curious, say, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're curious, yeah. like, what the hell? What you the knew hell? we don't yeah. wear blue shirts yeah. on Tuesdays. Yeah. You're curious, and now you want information from me. Yeah. When you want information from oh, me, yeah. you have... I have your attention. So cool? Yeah. And I can just pull something out of the air. Blue Shirt Tuesday? You don't know about Blue Shirt Tuesday? Come with me. <laughs> That makes sense? Yeah. So you can make the conversation compelling for the other person. It's just you want to invest it. Yeah. I mean, you want to invest the time and all that kind of stuff in. If they're truly not interested, is it worth it? Mm. If it's just some doer? Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Move on. So, like, how do you recommend, like, practicing these things? Because, like, I talk to people a lot, all the time. I don't feel like I'm necessarily getting better with each conversation. All right. What I'm going to have you do, and any two or below here, <laughs> 23 or below, is you have one rule. Answer every question to a point with a question. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. And the question is going to be based on what the other person said. So, for example, when he said India, instead of saying, okay, period, <laughs> you say, India? Question mark? Tell me about India. I've always wanted to visit India. Where exactly is India? All of Asia. <laughs> and I never know, is India poor or are they rich? Like I see fancy buildings and then I see like kids begging for money on TVs. I don't know which India are you from. <laughs> Whatever, that might be insulting. So. But just questions. And then you're talking 30%, they're talking 70%. So think of it, uh, you guys ever play tennis? Volleyball, yeah. badminton, in any of those sports, when do you score? Sorry. When the ball's in the other person's court, right? Volleyball, other person's court. Tennis, other person's court. Can you ever score with a ball in your court? So your job is to ask a question, send it back. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're like, score a point, score a point, <laughs> score a point. Make sense? Yeah. So just questions. Questions, there's a couple ways that you can practice. I like to go to restaurants and bars, anywhere social that you go, and just watch people. It's a blast to watch people. Especially with your group of people, you're with a group of friends, and you're picking out couples that are out of earshot, because you don't want to insult yeah. anybody, but you can actually watch their body language. And you can see, is this guy interested? Is this girl interested? And you can actually kind of judge. I wouldn't recommend going up there and asking to verify for your right <laughs> I'm getting the impression she's not into you, I just want to make sure she's not into you, right? You know what I mean? But you can, you can kind of deduce just from watching. So observing is one. Questions is another one. And even anytime, we're talking anytime, you go to the grocery store, they're like paper or plastic. What are you going to answer? Plastic. No. What are you going to answer? Because that's period. Question plastic? Mark. Why plastic? <laughs> What? What? Where's the plastic from? <laughs> <laughs> what if you said, um, paper or plastic, which one would you prefer? What were you hoping I would say? What do most people answer? Plastic. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter, right? No. All you're doing is practicing the question. Does that make sense? Yeah. So give me another example where someone's stating or asking you a question that's just Completely oblivious here. I'm trying to think. Super salad. Super salad, <laughs> perfect. How are you going to answer? Um, Presuming you don't care. <laughs> Presuming you don't care, right? It would be like soup. So, what if you don't care? <laughs> uh, what kind of soups do you have? Fantastic. Glad you asked. What if you, this is a waitress coming up to you and she's like, super salad? And you're interested in this girl. You want to get her phone number. Okay. Would you like super salad? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not as tight. I'm not as tight. How are you going to answer? Let's just pretend there's a waitress here. Uh, so let's time out right there. Right, yeah. Could you ask her for a phone number right there? She says super salad, and you're like, what are your digits? <laughs> you could? Do you think she'd give them to you? No. Why not? It's rather direct. <laughs> you have to work from the soup and the salad to the digits. Right. <laughs> you have to find bond the with missing. Her. Find <laughs> the missing. <laughs> you have to bond with her, right? Right. Yeah. So there's some steps you have to take. Right. 
So what can you add to start making your way? Um, if you answer soup for the period, <laughs> is that getting you any closer to those digits? No. No. Uh, so you need some help? Yeah. Anybody want to help them? Go ahead. All right. What kind of soups do you have? You ask her, then she'll give me a list, then ask her uh, which one is your favorite one. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> do you need a pen? <laughs> do you need a pen? And can I have a side of your digits with it? <laughs> <laughs> we touched off. <laughs> this guy, ladies, man. No. So, does that help? Yeah. That makes sense. In like two or three questions, you got her phone number. No, you did not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a numbers game. You got an extraining order, though. <laughs> That's pretty good. You have numbers of some kind. Right? <laughs> so, we have more questions? Yeah. Fire away. Um, so, Maybe there's like certain uh, times where you might be going into a conversation where both of you know what the conversation is going to be about. Okay. Um, so this isn't so much more about like meeting people, but it can be. Um, so maybe an example would be, say he knows that you want his ten million. Okay. And he is thinking about giving it to you. So both of you, like I guess, it's kind of awkward because I, this is like what I started with most because it's kind of awkward because you both know what you want on this conversation so mm -hmm. when you're using like like pleasantries it feels kind of weird because you know that both of you aren't really there for that but All right. something else. It's a great question. So the I'm going to have a lengthy answer here. I'll try to keep it short. So beyond what he's what you're essentially talking about is between the lines, right? Yes. I say hey flag guy how are you? Good how are you? And you have ten million dollars that you want to give me and I have ten million dollars that I want from you, but I can't just say, um, "I got a pocket. He needs a check. You got a pen. Let's make this happen." <laughs> right? Because he feels like, "What?" Yeah. Unless you guys ever study personality types? Yeah. So disc profiles. Are you guys familiar with those? Like um, my Briggs personalities. Like similar. Yeah. Similar. Yep. So Big I study the or... disc, which is D I S and C. Yeah. I'm a D, which is direct. Oh, I have. Yeah. Right. Those, yeah. So if he's a D. I can totally do that, because okay. like these are like I got stuff to do. Mm -hmm. I need a check. You got a check and a pen. Done, right? If I was a D girl, and I'm interested in you, and you're like Sue, hey, give me those I'm pictures. like, yeah, here's my phone number and your broccoli soup, right? Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Not everybody is a D. It's highly unlikely. Most people are S's, which is the more casual, where you have to go through that bonding period. Because S's seem to have all the time in the world. <laughs> Which, <laughs> that's a D saying that. <laughs> so a D personality is like direct. Mm -hmm. Just about every CEO in the world is a D. They're like, after you start your business and you run it for about five years, you'll become D's. Because <laughs> people will come to you with these stupid problems, and you're just like, okay, when I was into this business six months, I would have considered this a crisis. Now it's not a crisis. Somebody comes to you and they're like, I can't come into work today because my mom died and blah, blah, blah. All you hear is, I can't come into work, I have to solve that problem. Or when you first started to do business, you were hearing, oh, your mom died? Oh, I'm sorry. Right? But in the end, it's not relevant. So when I go to him, he's a D, he's like, here's your money. But if he's an S, I can say, like, hey, man, how's it going? Great shirt, love your shirt. Uh, who's your friend here? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good to meet you. How's it going? <laughs> and i got to go through this whole circus to get his check. Yeah. Okay? Where an I, I is more of a party person, right? Mm -hmm. So now i got to go through that whole song and dance. Hey, man, let's go on the riding bull. Come on. Where C is going to be whoever wrote that stuff. Uh, totally analytical. Psychoanalytical. Yeah. Right? So like accountants and stuff like that. So there's nothing wrong with different personality types, but you want to read that personality type. <laughs> And reading body language and stuff like that will help with that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, even, we still both know that, like, you want my money and stuff like that, so what would, like, all the dancing around, like, if I was a type S, or yep. whatever you were just saying, yep. how would you kind of get to the, like, how would you get... We have to bond, and, then and you, you have to feel comfortable with it. All right. We have to feel comfortable. Where D is, like, comfort's for suckers. Yeah. S is, like, I need to feel comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. I need to trust you. Even though I know you on paper, I met you a couple times, whatever, we need to feel comfortable. All right. So does that make sense? Yeah. I also have like an extension a little bit to that question. So in the example where, um, this is like a typical example, uh, where you're at like say like a bar or something, mm -hmm. and 
obviously when you're approaching uh, like a girl at a bar, you both know why that's happening. Mm -hmm. So like, I guess how do you get over that layer of like, um, where both like you might be you know freaking yourself out because you're like yeah like I know like she's thinking but I don't hear you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, what do you do to like orientate your body language, your tone, and all that stuff mm -hmm. to make them more comfortable? So is it safe to say that girls like confidence or lack of confidence? confidence. Okay, so if you walk over there kind of shy, is she gonna be like, oh, this is a dude for me? Yeah. No, you gotta walk in there just like. Um, you guys ever see uh, what's a Will Smith movie? Hitch. Hitch. Remember the bar scene with Hitch? Yes. It was a money bar scene. So I did uh, Sandler sales training. Sandler actually trained. They did the training for that scene. All the communication that Will Smith had with uh, Eva, whatever her name is, that was all based on some sales training. So you watch that little clip on YouTube, the bar scene for Hitch. It's great. Because he walks up there and he's confident. And he's asking her questions. And even though she's countering, if you remember, yeah. 